Hello, I am Dr. Joyce Van Donkerskud. I will be discussing injection site lesions in cattle and what we can do to reduce their incidence as beef producers and veterinarians. Injection site lesions refer to tissue damage in the muscle or the beef that are created by injecting an animal health product into the muscle, such as an antibiotic or a vaccine. This creates bruising and scar tissue. This tissue or this bruising does not resolve over time and in fact the tissue becomes tough up to three inches away from the injection site. If you look at the picture on the top right, that is the eye of round steaks and that white lesion by the yellow arrow is actually scar tissue that was created by injecting in the back thigh of an animal. When we do these injections we damage not only one stake but we can damage up to three to five stakes. On the bottom picture you can see there are five stakes and these are from the top butt of an animal where it was injected or the top hip and it damaged that scar tissue through all those stakes. This meat then becomes tough and is not edible. We conducted Canadian beef quality audits to look at various carcass um, attributes and one of the things we looked at was the incidence of surface injection site lesions on hanging carcasses. The 1995 beef quality audit that I conducted for the Canadian cattle industry, we found that 1.3% of hanging carcasses had visible surface injection site lesions. If you look at the picture on the right, you see that little bubble under the yellow arrow. That is an injection site lesion. We conducted another beef quality audit in 1999, and the incidence was down to 0.2%. In the most recent beef quality audit conducted by the Canadian cattle industry in fed cattle, which is our feeder steers and heifers, the incidence of surface injection site lesions was 0.56% in, in non-fed cattle, which are our cull cows and bulls, the incidence was 7%. These surface lesions, however, underestimate the true prevalence of injection site scars in muscle. Therefore, we as an industry conducted some injection site audits in subprimals or pieces of meat and looked deep into the muscle tissue for injection site scars. Uh, these surveys that I conducted for the industry, we started in the fall of 1996 and continued till the spring of 1999. We looked at various subprimals. The butt is the top hip of cattle, where your sirloin steaks come from. The blade is the neck of cattle, where you get your blade roasts and steaks. The round is the back thigh of cattle, and we have three different pieces of muscle there. The eye of round, which is in the middle, the inside round is on the inside of the leg, as you can imagine, and the outside is on the outside. When we started conducting these audits, we found that in our top butts or hip, 22% of our fed cattle had injection site lesions there. We then started the Canadian Cattlemen's Quality Starts Here program, educating producers on how to reduce the incidence of injection site scars by moving their injections from the back end of the cattle, where you have expensive cuts of meat, to the neck of the cattle or the blade. As a result of those uh, educational programs, we did reduce our incidence of injection site lesions um, by uh, about 10%. But as you can see, there was still more work to be done. When we calculate the economic losses from these injection site scars and the damaged meat that has to be trimmed and discarded, um, based on these audits, uh, the industry lost anywhere from $4 or $5 a head to almost uh, $10 a head, um, based on all the processed cattle um, processed in Canada during those years. So injection site scars can cause significant economic losses to the cattle industry and beef industry. We also conducted some injection site audits in non-fed cattle, which are our cull cows and bulls. We looked at the outside round, which is the back thigh of these cattle, and in these audits we found about a third of our non-fed cattle had injection site scars. And if you look at these pictures, that scar tissue uh, on your right side there is the amount of tissue that was damaged, and on the bottom there's another picture of an injection site scar, and as you can imagine, this tissue must be trimmed and discarded. These economic losses on the outside round alone uh, resulted anywhere from almost uh, $2 to $5 a head loss on trim tissue and discarded tissue or muscle. So how do we prevent injection site scars? It's very important that when we administer animal health products, that includes vaccines or antimicrobials, 
and pesticides that are, or parasecticides that are given injectable ones like ivermectins, that we only give our injections in the neck area of the cattle. And this triangular area on this picture below shows you the area where we can give injections, either those that go in the muscle, intramuscular, or those that go under the skin, subcutaneous. But we have to be careful that we don't inject on top of that triangular area because there's a big ligament in the neck and products will not be properly absorbed. We also don't want to hit the shoulder of the animals because we can break the tip of the needle off or make these cattle lame, as well as we don't want to go too low in the neck because we have a jugular vein and carotid artery and we do not want to give products in these because the animals can actually react to those products given in the wrong route and actually die if we do that. So it's important to give injections in that triangular red area there um, and to stay away from all injections in the top hip or back leg because those are our sirloin steaks and our round roasts and steaks. We should also try if possible to give injections under the skin or subcutaneously if the label directions permit. There are two methods to give products subcutaneously. The top picture on the right shows the tented method. This is where we pick up the skin of the animal and we put the needle between the two folds of the skin and then inject the product. The picture below shows another method to give the injection subcutaneously if you're worried about poking your finger or the product uh, may have some human safety risk is to go in at an angle with a short needle, flip your wrist so you can see the needle under the skin and then inject the product. We should give no more than 10 mils of the product per injection site because larger volumes result in more tissue damage and poor absorption which may reduce efficacy of the product. As well, we should try to space multiple injections a couple inches apart so products don't interfere and reduce efficacy of the product. It's very important to prevent injection site lesions by, by properly restraining cattle. And the best way to restrain cattle is to put them in a chute with their head caught in front of the head gate before you inject them. Um, if we don't do this and we try to inject cattle in the snake or an alleyway, frequently these cattle will bounce around and the needle will come in and out of the muscle and we will get more tissue damage as well we may break off the needle which is a food safety issue. It's important to change these needles at least every 10 to 15 head or earlier if they are dull, bent, or have a burr on them because these dull needles will increase tissue damage and injection site scars as well that increases the risk of broken needles which is a physical food safety hazard. Sharps or needles should be disposed in sharps containers and sealed uh, for human safety. It's also important to keep the needles and injection site clean to prevent abscesses. You can see in the picture here there's a piece of beef and there is an abscess or that pussy material in. Nobody wants to have a roast or a steak that has an abscess in it. We should also never go back into a drug bottle with a dirty needle because we increase the risk of contaminating that product and as a result increase the risk of creating injection site abscesses. For products such as modified live vaccines where we have a liquid portion and a dry portion, we should try to use transfer needles, which are double-edged needles, to reconstitute the products. We should also avoid the use of projectile apparatuses such as dart guns or stock doctors to administer drugs because these um, apparatuses administer product at high velocity and high pressure. As well, frequently the injections are given in the back end of cattle and depending what product is used, more than 10 mil per injection site is frequently used, which are all against the beef quality guidelines to reduce tissue damage. You can see in the picture below, this is from a hanging carcass. There's this large red kind of greenish area. This is a result of using a dart gun and trying to administer Mycotil under the skin. Mycotil is a drug that must be given under the skin and with the dart, the dart gun, actually the product got administered in the muscle, which caused severe tissue damage. It's also important that we follow pharmaceutical manufacturers' directions for the dosage, route, and use of products. That is, to try to avoid extra-label use of drugs, unless this has been prescribed by your veterinarian under a valid veterinary client-patient relationship. This is to ensure the product will work for you, and that you don't waste your money, and also to avoid injection site lesions and drug residues, which is a food safety hazard. By following these simple guidelines, we can reduce the risk of injection site lesions in beef and thus help ensure our customers, the consumer, 
that they be that the beef they eat is safe and uh, a good eating experience.